Reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Reading from Matthew chapter 24, verses 3, on to verse 8. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came up, the disciples came on to him privately, saying, Tell us, tell us, who's the us? His disciples. Who are the disciples of Jesus when he was first on the earth? When he was presently on the earth? They were Jews, Hebrews. Hebrews taken out of Shem. Okay? So when they say, tell us, the Hebraic Jewish people. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Second coming, because obviously he's already here when they were speaking to him, right? Right, okay? And the end of the world. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Christ. Now, like we have talked before, but this is not for, this video is not being made for the brethren particularly. Christ means anointed one. Okay? Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. Anointed one. Okay? That's what Jesus Christ means. Uh, the Hebrews and Yiddish, Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay? That's how they say. But Christ here means, Christ means anointed one. So, with some exceptions, there are some psychopaths out there that go around, Hi, I'm Jesus Christ! Obviously, how would you react to that? It's like, okay, hey, officer. Yeah, you would think the guy's a lunatic, and rightfully so. So, when he says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, anointed. This is the way. Hmm. This is the way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? He is the way. Exclusive. Okay? Very exclusive. But you see so many religions today claiming to be the way. And they're not. Okay? They're not. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Mm. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Today we are definitely hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Today we are aware of famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Okay? We are seeing partial pieces of from verse 3 on to verse 8. Obviously. And in other parts of the world, besides here in America, not yet, uh, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the saints are being persecuted. Okay? Especially in Muslim countries. Okay? Especially. All right? So we are seeing a small portion of this. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Obviously, I'm making reference on to the stuff that's happened over in Israel today. Okay? All right. Many have inquired about this. So, these are the beginnings of sorrows. What awaits you who get left behind? Your mind can't even fathom. Hollywood can give you maybe a snapshot of it, but the sheer horror of God's wrath being poured upon this earth for seven years. It's going to make the time of the Holocaust look like nothing. It's going to make World War I, II, 
and three pale in comparison to the horrors and nightmares that will be upon this earth during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is which Matthew chapter 24. We just read a portion of Matthew 24 for our instruction in righteousness. We, we are, obviously, today, we are hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Okay? We are seeing nation rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Yes, we are. We are seeing these things today. Does this mean that Matthew chapter 24 <laughs> is for us doctrinally today doctrinally as pertaining to salvation absolutely not you have to watch out for this because when wars and stuff like that start happening you get these wacky christians that come along wanting to tie in things from the book of revelation matthew chapter 24 and they say that the trumpets are nonsense nonsense don't believe that Okay, they are feeding to you horse pucky, garbage. Okay, it's garbage. Why? Because it's not for us today. We are seeing things like this happening today, yes. But see, when you got people, these Christians, who come along wanting to take the events of Revelation and make them doctrinally pertinent for today, and in Daniel, as for today, or as the Catholics do, they already happened. They're lying to you. Okay? They're taking the truth and trying to serve it to you as doctrinally pertinent for today. Hence, turning, making the word of God into a lie. See? Okay? You gotta be aware of these things. Just because they say they're a Christian doesn't mean they're saved at all. And it doesn't mean that they're speaking the truth either. Okay? Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30. Again, any of you, any of you, any of you, find me in the authorized version of the scriptures. I disregard the Bibles, okay? I do. I do. This is what God has preserved. It's perfect and errant, given by inspiration. There is no error in it, okay? This is infallible, the Word of God, okay? I reject all other Bibles. This is not a Bible. This is the Scriptures. Yeah, it says Bible right there. We won't get off on that. Jeremiah 30, verses 6 on to verse 8. I actually, let's read verses 4 on to verse 9 in Jeremiah 30. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Alas, for that day is great. Now, heretics will come to this as like the day of the time of Jacob's trouble was one day. No, that day where it begins. Okay, and you got to remember, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is not bound by our time. A thousand years is as one day to him. Okay, you and I, we are subject to time. Okay. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, he is not subject to time, okay? A day to him is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day, okay? You got to remember that. Time does not exist to the Lord as you and I live and perceive time, okay? You got to remember that. I know that's hard for us to fathom, okay? I, I, it is. It is. Why? Because the skin suit sags. Without maintenance, things break down. Okay, you foolish atheists, they don't get better. Okay? And if you think what mankind is becoming is evolving into something better, you need to share what you're smoking. Okay? Because that's lunacy. That's insanity. Okay? 
Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob, Israel. Okay? Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. There will be a remnant of Hebraic Jewish people who will survive the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck and will burst thy bonds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I shall raise up unto them, Jesus Christ. Making reference unto his second coming. Any of you in the authorized version of the scriptures, find me the Word, find this word for word for me. Find me the, T-H-E, definitive article, Great Tribulation. Find me in the authorized version of the scriptures. I challenge you. Word for word. The Great Tribulation. Find it for me. Find it for me. Go ahead. Find it. <laughs> Put it in the comment section. Word for word. The, T-H-E, Great Tribulation. Find it. Okay. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And why do people want to remove Jacob from the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, because Catholicism wants you to believe that the time that is coming is for the purification of the church. And because Satan, through the horror of his horror, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and all her whorish daughters, and all these divisions and branches of this Christianity, has made people dumbed down. People do not know the Word of God. The Christians don't even take one of their ridiculous Bibles to churches anymore apparently, and they also have their the things typed out on a little piece of paper for them, okay? There is a famine in the land. Now, in Amos chapter 8, what I'm making re reference to, the fulfillment of that will come during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? But we see a type, a part of such fulfillment today, in that people are not being told the word of God, okay? And if they are, they're getting barely any pieces of it from people who are usually just telling you to believe and receive. Or they're these whack job Baptist guys who, oh, just absolutely crazy. Crazy. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It is designed specifically to bring Israel back onto the Lord. And it's going to happen. We have it written in Scripture. It's going to happen. Okay? So when you got these things... And now, it's horrible what's going on in Israel. Israel has declared war on Hamas. Hmm. People have died. Blood has been shed. It is horrible. There's no justifying it. It is horrible. See, we have on perfect authority that such is going to happen. Things are going to get a lot worse before they even begin to get better. See, there's that thermodynamics being bound by time. Things deteriorate. And see, our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, excuse me, I've got something on my eye. Um, he's not bound by what you and I are bound by. Okay? So, 
when you've got people coming around now, there's nothing wrong with being informed. There's nothing wrong with being informed at all. But see, then you get these people who come around, like I said, trying to bring the events in Revelation and make them pertinent as if they are doctrinal for today. This is dangerous, okay? The trumpets are not going off as we speak, okay? The seven judgments are not happening now, okay? Those are all going to happen during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, the problem is people are being delivered something by, by something that is not being right divided okay rightly divided as I have told you many times the entirety of Scripture is for you yes it is but it is not all doctrinally written to you and Satan has done an incredible job deceiving people being non dispensational perfect example that I can think of charismatics charismatics Pentecostals say, well, the Holy Ghost is on me. These people teach that you're not once saved, always saved, that the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, as if it were under the law, a different dispensation. Heresy. Heresy. Okay, you come to the Lord on his terms today. He saves you. You're once saved, always saved, sealed unto the day of redemption, because it's not your salvation. It's his. It's by grace through faith. Another one are these ridiculous, sleazy believists, who some of them claim to be dispensational, rightly dividing the word of truth, but these imbeciles will, and I've this, this is what they do, they say that it was by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. I, I harp on that because it is imperative to debunking their nonsense, okay? Anyone with half a mind, could read the account of the Garden of Eden and clearly see that it is not by grace through faith. It is works. It see, and that alone debunks their entire argument. Also, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is coming, which is coming, okay? During that time, it is also by faith and works. During the time of Jacob's, uh, Jacob's trouble, these are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But these idiot, sleazy believers, fake gracers, will tell you it's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. No, it's not. And these are also the same who will tell you about, well, Christian, and there will be Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble. You who get left behind, you'll see this. Okay? Because I believe that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to relegate and call the people who follow him Christians. Yeah, that's what I believe. Okay? But, people, during the time of Jacob's trouble, if you take the mark of the beast, okay, you're going to go to hell. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's the only time in recorded history, in recorded history, that you will be immediately damned for something you did without remedy. And see, the goal of the sleazy believers, the goal of Christianity is for those of you who get left behind to, for you to believe in a dispensation where it is faith and works, for you to believe that you can be okay by just believing and that, hey, you got to take the mark of the beast. See, these, these people, these sleazy believists are devils trying to damn you to hell after we, the body of Christ, get caught up. Redemption of the purchased possession, it is called. And see, also too, like I said, a lot of these Christians are coming out and hey, it's a money maker for them. Especially with these charismatic devils. You know, God spoke to me. A devil spoke to you. God didn't speak to you. All these charismatics, you know, God gave me a vision. I have seen in a dream. Yeah, I have dreamed a dream. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. And I'm sure you have, being deceived by Satan. These are the same types of people who say that you have to actually visually see God, okay? You haven't seen God. 
Okay, God does not operate that way today. Yes, he could. Yes, he could. All right, yes, he could. Of course he can. God can do whatever he wants. But see, if he were to do that, then you wouldn't be walking by faith, would you? You would be walking by sight. You, deceived poor young man. Whatever happened to you? Whatever happened to you? Oh, I know, you got a hold of a little Canadian back bacon. But isn't it interesting that after uh, the purpose was served, he probably discarded you, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, you. But I, I, I'm not going to go there. Okay? Jeremiah 10. Jeremiah 10. Okay? Verses 1 on to verse 3. Jeremiah 10. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. You know, you, you can discern the, the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. Fascinating. Why is that? Well, these people professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Okay? For the customs of the people are vain. Doesn't take a genius for you to figure that one out. You don't, you don't even have to be a saint to figure that one out. Okay? For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, and the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. And we'll stop right there. Okay, I'll stop right there. It's horrible. It's horrible what's going on over in Israel. But see, you have to also recall, dear friend, and see, none of you are being taught this. No one is talking about it. And when people who are talking about it, recently, and I think a certain individual who I... Uh, <laughs> despise abhorrently. Um, I think he ha might have something to do with it, but I can't prove it. Recently, a lot of these uh, these guys trying to come around emailing me, wanting me to go to an SEO or whatever guy to grow the channel and get my... Listen, you people who are bothering me with that, this is not about money. This is not about popularity. Okay, this is of this channel was given to me of the Lord. Okay, this is the Lord's ministry. It is not mine. Okay, I am not in this to, for filthy lucre. Are you crazy? No. Okay, I don't want to become very big. I don't want the channel to have thousands of subscribers. Look what happens when people get that many people following them. I'm grateful. Absolutely praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For what the Lord has given your servant here. I'm grateful. I don't want thousands of people. I don't want thousands. Okay? And the views, yes, they go up, they go down. But if one person watches or hears something and it helps them to come unto the Lord or they are edified, then it is all. See, that's the thing. It's, it has been worth the effort. Sometimes I question. Sometimes I question. But if one person, just one, then it's all worth it. Then it's all worth it. So you, you people kind of emailing me and, you know, want to grow your channel, thank you. But no thank you. This is nothing about, this is not about money, God forbid. This is not about me being a superstar or having a, having a cult following. No, no, it's nothing like that. I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do. And if one person gets anything then it's worth it 
and it has been worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. And if anything comes, it comes. I can't control that. I can't control that. But see, excuse that little thing, uh, because, uh, I, you know, like I said, I can't prove certain things, but it is very suspect to me, uh, especially the manner in which these emails are coming, especially the first one. Right, buddy? Uh, yeah. But um, if you guys are actually watching this, who are wanting to like, hey, let me help you grow, go away. Go away. I have no interest. And God forbid, get monetized? Are you crazy? And get money from Google? <laughs> I, I, I think perhaps maybe no. Thank you very little. Okay. I had to address that. Sorry for that rabbit trap. But you have to remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Verse 22, for the Jews, the Hebraic people, require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And it is also said in the scripture, again, that we are to walk by faith. <clears throat> Let me see, where is that? Yes, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven. We are hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Yes, we are. Do not be dismayed at them. Okay? We know the. you can feel sorrow. You can have compassion. You can have empathy. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. You can weep, you can mourn. You can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And by the way, there's going to be quite a few links in the description box where we get more in depth. This I'm just addressing it with this video, okay? I'm just addressing it with this video, okay? Yes, and the one about the pray for the peace of Jerusalem, uh, about Psalm 122, go ahead and check that out, okay? We are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And you also have to remember, dear friends, that God is not done with Israel. The church, the body of Christ, has not replaced Israel. And see, that is the goal of the Christian. That's why they harp on the Great Tribulation. Find that for me. Okay? That's why they go, the Great Tribulation. That's why Catholicism is for the purification of the church. That's why they blur, well, what is Jew? Huh? Anyone who believes, huh? He's a Hebrew, right? <laughs> no. No. Whoa, there's no Jew nor Greek, Brad. That's salvifically. In salvation, yeah, there is no distinction. Culturally, hey, come on. My dear Hemetic brethren. My dear Hemetic sisters. Come on. Is there not a distinction in culture and in, you know, in uh, countenance and visage, yes. You're saved? Okay, you came to the Lord on his terms, he saved you? Guess what? I'm your brother and you're mine. You're my sister and I'm your brother. It doesn't matter in salvation. There's no distinction in salvation. But see, Christians like to come and blur that. Okay. This is why I am vehemently against Christian. <laughs> I despise <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> and remember, despising something is just a little bit more than hating something. Keep that in mind. Different. Okay. But about that. It is in Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter 12, I believe it is, where we see the promise given on to Abraham. There's going to be a plethora of uh, videos for you uh, to consider in the description box. A lot of them. Actually, I might just put the whole uh, playlist um, onto the Jews for you. Okay? Simplify it for you. Okay? Lots of information will be for you in the description box. 
If you don't want to take the time and look at it, then shut up. And see, anti-Semitism is growing at an alarming rate because Satan wants to turn the world against a Jew. And he will for, for a short while. Because I've heard people say, well, you know, Hamas is in the right. Listen, that land was given on to Israel. That's Israel's land. And the proof is right here, the authorized version of the scriptures. They have it written down. That land that is being fought over, that belongs to Israel. That belongs to Jacob, given to him of God. Okay, but what's the problem right now? Israel, Jewry, rejects God. Watch the videos about replacement theology, okay, where we go through Romans chapter 11, okay, because many, and see, that's what Christianity does, you know, they think that we've replaced the Jew, we have not. The Hebrew, the Jew, is the apple of God's eye, and nothing's going to change that, and this is why so many Christians, so many of these kindredists hate Israel. Israel, the Hebrew, is the most hated kindred on earth. They are. They are. I've seen people, these devils, who will tear each other's throats out over some stupid thing. But yet when it comes to their hatred of Israel, they walk arm in arm, and that's something. The, the, the devils, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Uh, no, no, that, that doesn't work, <laughs> okay? All right? Israel is the most hated people on earth. Why is that? Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, onto a land that I will shew thee. See, the difference of this dispensation, the time of the patriarchs, is it's, it's similar to this time, but there's no eternal security, because Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. See, right there, verse, uh, verse 1 in Genesis 12 shows you, I will. The faith during the time of the patriarchs was, I will. I will. He got them out of Egypt, brought them to the promised land. Okay? The time of the patriarchs, I will. That's what their faith was in. I will. Noah. He's told Noah, guess what? I'm going to destroy everything with the flood. He's like, I'm going to do that. Noah's like, oh, what should I do? Build an ark. Roger! He builds an ark because the faith was what God will do. Okay? Time of the law. Okay? What was the faith? The, what was what was the object of the faith? Okay, the Lord. Yes, but see, you would be honored by God if you kept what the Lord said according to the law. So your faith was in God, what He would do in you keeping the law. Hence, faith and works during the law. Okay, that's as simple as I can say it. Okay, today in this dispensation, okay, you don't have to do what the law, the law, as given to you in Scripture, requires in order to be saved or right with God. The requirement is today that you come to him on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, being, you know, not being like Adam, the woman thou gavest me to be where she did give me of the tree and I did eat. No, you got to be like I put him on the cross. And you got to fear him because he can send you to hell. He can send you to hell, okay? And you're an idiot if that doesn't scare you. You are. I'm being kind when I say that to you. You're an idiot. You are an absolute idiot if hell doesn't frighten you. You are. You have no brains. Not only are you a fool who say in your heart there is no God, but you're an idiot, okay? And see... In a broken, contrite state, you want to cry out to the greater, who is the Lord. Okay? All right? During this dispensation, you don't have to keep 
the law. It's not a requirement. Brokenness, contrition, and fear are. Okay? And what is our faith in today? It is finished. Our faith is in Christ Jesus. On him! Okay? That's the difference. And when we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, get redeemed, caught up, okay? Most of you are aware of it as the, uh, the rapture. And rapture does not appear in scripture. And those of you who say we shouldn't say that word, I wish you'd shut up and quit saying it yourself. Ugh. Okay? <laughs> Stop that. I mean, come on. <laughs> okay? But once we get redeemed, the time of Jacob's trouble, Israel's trouble, seven years. During that time, it has faith and works again. It's like a revert back to the law. Okay? There is 144,000 Hebraic Jews will have eternal security. The rest else, got to keep the law and faith on Jesus Christ. What will be the faith on during the time of Jacob's trouble? And what God will do? Second coming. Okay? Second coming. And also, too, kingdom of heaven, when Jesus Christ is on the earth. Okay? You are going to be able to visually see with your eyes, those of you, you haven't given any evidence. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of evidence. You just don't want to see it. Uh, you're going to actually visually see with your eyeballs. Jesus Christ, you know, the one that the saints have been telling you about and you've been rejecting. Yeah, you're going to see him with your eyes. And when you read Hebrews 11 verse 1, Okay, you go ahead and do that from the authorized version. Go ahead. It's not by grace through faith they're in the kingdom of heaven. People, run away from these sleazy believest fake gracers. In my opinion, they are the deadliest of the Christians. They are a form of the ecumenical movement begun by the Jesuit order. Okay? Hence, Rome is their mother. That's right. That's right. You guys are part of the ecumenical movement. The ecumenical movement that was started by the Jesuit order. Your mother is Rome. Yeah. But in Genesis chapter 12, sorry for a little rabbit trail there. Abraham was told to get out. And see, the word Hebrew means, um, uh, the, the first appearance of Hebrew is, in, is with Abram. And it means something like being brought out, called out, or passed over, or passed over, or something like that. But whatever, Hebrew is attributed onto Abram. Okay. The Lord called Abram out of his father's house and from his kindred. His kindred was Shem. And God called Abraham out, or Abram out, of Shem to establish the Hebraic people. Okay. That's not a Hamite. That's not a Japhethite. That's not even the, some Shemites, such as the Japanese, Chinese, the Thailand people, and whatnot. Uh, that not there. They're the American Indian, as they call them, or as this one thing here, Indigenous Peoples Day. <laughs> yeah, Monday. Yeah, that that disgusting pig, Columbus, the Catholic. Yeah. Yeah, the Catholic Columbus. And here they got the Indigenous Peoples Day, referring on to the American Indians, okay? Like the Klefasuwasu, the Sioux Indian, okay? Yes, yeah. Guess what? They were of Shem. They are of Shem. 
Okay? They're not Hebrew, but they're of Shem. Lots of links for you in the description box, okay? But he was told to get out so that he may establish the Hebraic line from whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, came. Verse 2 and 3. And I will make of thee a great nation, Israel. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And through Jesus Christ, amen. And here's why everyone hates Israel. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That promise. And you look at that promise, you read that context. There's no catch to it, to that promise. Oh, there's a catch about the Israel being in the promised land. Oh, yeah. If they disobey, they do all this stuff. Look at the Holocaust. The Holocaust of the Jew, okay, which was judgment from God. In the description box, we have a three-part video on the Holocaust, okay? All right? Oh, and a certain individual is like, oh, Brad, there were so many lies in that. Yeah? Why don't you tell me? Oh, there's so many. Tell me. Give me scripture. Oh, there are just so many. Shut up. You ain't got nothing. Wicked devil. Okay? Yeah, I remember that. See, the enemy is counting on you people who having the attention span of a gnat and not remembering things, except what they want you to remember. And they're right. Okay? But that's why everybody hates Israel. Because of that promise. And also, um, we're not going to get all totally into it in this video, but Romans 11, okay? You know, you got the, like that Steve Anderson guy who hates the Jewish people, who hates the Hebrews. Uh, he, he even says it himself. You know, he says it himself. And those, his disciples of Stephen Anderson, uh, you know, I, I, I pray for those people to go to hell. Okay? They're in league with the Vatican. Okay? To hate the Hebrew, you are, you are in league with the Vatican. But in... Romans 11, Romans 11, we read from, oh, we will read from, oh, let's read from verse 25 on to oh, 29. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. You know, if you, I've run into so many of these uh, Christians who hate Israel, who hate the Hebraic Jewish people. And I've even come across, and unfortunately, because I have an incredible haircut, and I prefer my hair this way, I've even encountered some of these uh, white supremacists who, because of my haircut, think that I'm in league with them. And when they, uh, you know, they search and find, it's like, whoa, you know, I've been called a race traitor by these guys. It's like, dude, you go to hell. You shut up. It's like, well, I believe in Jesus. And it's like, it's with these white supremacist guys who hate Israel. It's like, uh, dude, you, you call yourself a Christian, right? And you are a Christian, of course. But you're saying you're saved, right? And they're like, yeah. It's like, uh, you realize that Jesus sprang of Judah. He's a Hebrew. He's a Jew. Jesus was a white man. Or the better one, Jesus was a black man. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He had afro. Well, so what? Even if he did. But what you're referring to about the thing about the sheep, uh, it was in color thereof. And when in his purified form, okay? Yes, we read in uh, Song of Solomon that his hair was black like a raven. Okay, yes, yes, okay. See, nitpicking at little things, trying to turn Jesus into something that he is not. Jesus is not a white man. Jesus is not a black man. Jesus is Shemitic. He's a Hebrew. 
okay? All right? Jesus is, and he is not what you mold him into be. He is, okay? Again, I'm just going to probably put the playlist in there so you guys can go through that and look for yourselves, okay? But let's continue here. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. People like to twist that. It's like, like every single Hebrew, Hebraic Jew will be saved. No. Well, that's what that says. This, you know, you got to remember, the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be Jews that take the mark of the beast in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay? Not all of them are going to be saved, but those that survive, and so all Israel shall be saved. That remains. That remains. Okay? And after that man of sin, the son of perdition, reveals himself, where it you know, goes into the third rebuilt temple, saying, I am going to be looking like, envisage at least, the Roman Catholic Jesus. I truly believe that. There are going to be Hebrews that are going to be like, oy vey. And it is from that. Okay? It is from that. Okay? Or else, because if every single Hebrew will be saved, hmm, really, really, so then that means that they will be saved without any consent? Hmm? That means, oh, kind of like Calvinistic? Hmm? No. No. I don't know something. Salvation never has or never will be by force. Never. Never has, never will be. Well, it's by grace through faith. Not in every dispensation. That is in this dispensation. We've already discussed that. Okay? God never has or never will force you to do anything. Okay. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Okay? As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, context here, they are God's elect. Elect today, in context, the elected way of the cross. But in this context, it's clearly talking about Israel. Okay? But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. The Father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, the sons of Ishmael make a big error because they are, they are sons of Abraham. Yes, they are. But it is in Isaac your seed shall be called. So of the fathers is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Abraham, Ishmael, and whoever, okay? But the father's sakes, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. See, Israel is the apple of God's eye. Absolutely. But see, that alone does not mean that he is going to force Israel, force them to believe him. I mean, there's a remnant that always does. There will be those that do. Yes, there will. And because the Jews require a sign, they will eventually, those that remain, will eventually come around. We have it on great authority. We have it on excellent authority. Psalm 102. Psalm 102. In my opinion, this is a perfect, perfect foreshadowing of the redemption of Israel. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come on to thee. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Hmm. Trouble. Oh, kind of like the day of Jacob's trouble. Brad, you just said a day. R remember, there, dear friend, a day to the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day outside of time. Okay? And besides, Scripture shows us clearly that this time is a seven-year period. Not just one day. So go away. Okay? Incline thine ear unto me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. Now, some will be thinking, and, and we address this in the Holocaust video, some will be thinking, well, that's, that's the Holocaust. You can intuit the Holocaust into this, but you would be better if you looked at Psalm 102 for what it is truly intended for, as I believe, as a picture of the time of Jacob's trouble. For my heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. And also the tie-ins with the book of Job, okay? And with the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's something you got to do on your own time. That would be voluminous to do actual videos on that. But um, the tie-ins are just so beautiful, okay? With the inevitable redemption of Israel in a picture type of Job, okay? By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. The owls. I've seen these videos with owls as pets. They look pretty cute, don't they? But uh, you could see pictures of the um, crematoria. I believe it was in Dachau or maybe Auschwitz where they had like owls on the oven doors. Or owls, you know, owls were attributed during the Holocaust with symbolism. And occultism, the owl is quite a prominent symbol. But they make a cute pet, apparently. Whatever. Also, they're a creepy bird, you know. And a lot of people will mistake owls, the, the noise that they make for other things and whatnot. But anyway... Rabbit trail, sorry. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I watch and, uh, and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Be on the housetop, you know, like it says in Matthew 24. Let him on the house run for the mountains. Okay. Mine enemies reproach me all the day and they that are mad against me are sworn against me remember the people that uh maybe you don't there were people that swore to kill paul the minute they had a chance okay a lot of the sons of ishmael are sworn against israel to kill israel the jesuits are sworn against the church, the body of Christ, okay? Our enemies, my enemy, is sworn against me, against you, against all, okay? For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping because of thine indignation and thy wrath. God who gets angry. And as we addressed in the previous video, Christianity gives you this sissy, fake Jesus who's not angry, who loves you unconditionally. Yes, because of thine indignation and thy wrath, to whom much is given, much is required. And Israel was given everything. And we have it written of how Israel would be up and down, up and down. Okay? 
because of thine indignation and thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. My days are like a shadow that declineth. I am withered like grass. Now, yes, you can intuit that for the um, Holocaust. But as I said, the Holocaust of the Jew that will come during the time of Jacob's trouble will make the six million, over six million, I believe, uh, Jews murdered in the Holocaust look like nothing. Look like absolutely nothing. You would be better off to recognize this, as I believe, for it is, for the time for the Hebraic Jewish person during the time of Jacob's trouble. But as with all, virtually all, Psalm 117, there's really not a shift. But we see a shift here, like you do in virtually all the Psalms. A shift. And look at now, I mean, if you want, take your little pen and put a line marking that at verse 11. Verse 12, here's the shift, here's the turn in the Psalm. But thou, O Lord. See, when you're broken and contrite and fear the Lord, but thou, you, Lord, but thou, O Lord, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever. Amen. And thy remembrance unto all generations. Thou shalt arise. And have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Second coming. Where Jesus on a throne in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning for a thousand years of time, the kingdom of heaven in Jerusalem. King of the Jews. King of all the Hoyle. Okay? For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. Mankind is dust. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones, called to be lively stones. Okay? The Lord will bless those who bless him and curse those who curse them. Curse them. Sure you want to be an enemy to God's people? So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Yes, during the kingdom of heaven. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Again, watch out for people. At least, you know... At least certain people have enough to say, yeah, I hate these people. Rather than someone who tries to be cute and say, oh, I despise them. Despising something is actually worse than hating. Hating is black and white. You can see, you can deal with, someone hates me up front. Hey, I can deal with that. I despise you. A little ambiguous there. You're brilliant, Jack. <laughs> You're brilliant. Okay. This shall be written. The, this shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Created. Uh, remember in Ezekiel, you don't in Ezekiel where he says, "I will give you a new heart. I will write my laws upon your heart, and you will be my. I will be your God, and you shall be my people." In the book of Ezekiel, okay, Israel today, they are not God's people. That they, they are His elect. But they're not God's people in that they do not believe on their Mashiach. Okay? Yes, Israel, the Hebrew, is God's chosen people. We saw that in Romans already. You can't get away from that. But they are not his people in the fact that they do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we are, we the Gentiles, are grafted in to make them jealous so that they can see their God in us. 
And I know for certain that the Hebraic people, especially the beautiful Hebraic people who are actually saved, they see this thing called Christianity and they laugh. Well, they don't laugh, but they, they hate it. And rightfully so. I understand why a saved Hebraic Jew would much rather, and I and I get it. That you know, I get it. I'm on the same page as they are in that respect. It's like because you know, you're you're saved, you're a saint. You're saved, you're a saint. Period. Okay. But I understand where they're coming from. It's like I'm a messianic Jew. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. You don't want to be called Christian. Why? Because of the crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. Because of the programs. Because they were poked with pokers uh, to keep them awake while they were being argued with by Catholic priests. Catholicism is Satan's religion. Don't forget that, dear friend. Don't forget that. <clears throat> For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven, did the Lord behold the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord, he weakeneth my strength in the way. He shortened my days. And unless the de Lord had shortened the days, there'd no flesh be saved. The tie-ins with Psalm 102 are just amazing. Okay? I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish. But thou shalt endure. Yes, we're going to have a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them. New heaven and new earth. And they shall be changed. But thou art the same. And thy years shall have no end. I am. He is. Okay? He is the Lord. He changes not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. But thou art the same. What changes, dear friend, is how God deals with man. So many Hebraic people. It's like, well, your God is a nice God. My God was mean. No, your God is my God. What's changed is how he deals with people. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? All right. Okay. The children of thy servant shall continue, and their seed shall be blessed before thee. And let's finish this video with Psalm 46. For those who are saved, and the Jew that will be redeemed eventually. God is our strength and very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed. Excuse me. Excuse me. Therefore we will not we fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Waters. Hmm. And remember, check this out for yourself. Uh, Revelation 17, verse 15, about waters being likened unto people. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. Hmm. And of course, mountains shake with volcano, volcanic stuff. But you also got to remember, sometimes in Scripture... Uh, mountains are likened on to people who are stubborn, rooted. Not all the time, but sometimes, okay? Depending on context. There is a river 
The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, Jerusalem. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, Jerusalem, Israel. Remember, in Revelation 12 or 13, I believe it is, it's, it's, it's 12, um, a woman, the Catholics tell you that's Mary. No, that's uh, the woman in Revelation 12, I believe that's Revelation 12, is Israel. Hold your place. I don't want to quote that wrong to you. There, there are videos on that. that. You know, incidentally, is it just channel Lord gave me, you know, on, on your laptop, you go to the search where you can search your channel, but now they're putting other videos other than the one that is on the channel in there. Has that happened to any of you? I did that yesterday, you know, getting links for the, the uh, to put in the description box. And I put up something, a uh, keyword, and it's like, what's this? That's not my, that's not on the channel. It's like, what's going on? Hey, YouTube, stop that. Okay, stop that. That's annoying. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, what is that? Uh, Revelation, Revelation, Revelation chapter 12. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Revelation 12, uh, 1 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with, with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Catholics will tell you that that is Mary. It's not Mary. It's Israel being likened on to right there. Prove it. Twelve stars. Okay? It's not Mary. Especially not the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay? Which is the Queen of Heaven talked about in Jeremiah. Okay? Jeremiah 44. Go look it up. Okay? So, Verse 5 in Psalm 46. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Talking about Israel. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. You know, it says in Scripture, when he comes back, he's going to destroy them with the sword of his mouth. I have seen you know, Google images where, you know, they try to draw this stuff with Jesus having a sword that literally, his word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, like it says in the book of Ephesians, this, the authorized version, is the sword of the spirit. This is the word of God. So when Jesus comes back, smiting them with the sword of his mouth, he's going to be speaking his word. Okay, that's what that means. Okay? <clears throat> the heathens raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. And for the time of Jacob's trouble, look at what, look at that, you know, look at how he destroys Satan. And, and there's another thing. This Gog and Magog thing. I've heard that with people with the what going on today. These heretics love to try to take things in for other dispensations and try to make them applicable today. Listen, the Gog and Magog thing don't happen yet for until a long while. It happens after Satan is let loose from the bottomless pit. Okay? That you can read that in Revelation. Gog and Magog, and you can tie that in that the World War III video will be in the description box, okay? Gog and Magog, as described in Scripture, doesn't happen until after the thousand years have expired and Satan is let loose from the bottomless pit. Meaning, we got a long way yet to go before the Gog and Magog thing becomes scripturally, doctrinally applicable. Okay? So watch out for that. Watch out for that one. Okay? Please, watch out for that. That, that, one, that one just irks me to no end. It's like, oh. 
in the, in the description box, okay? But the works of the Lord. What are the works of the Lord today? The death, burial, and resurrection, and the bloodshed on the cross. At his second coming, destroying Satan. Well, not destroying Satan, excuse me. Destroying his armies and whatnot, and establishing the kingdom of heaven, excuse me. Uh, Satan will be done away with once he's let loose. Gog and Magog. Then the great white throne and stuff like that. Okay? So the Gog and Magog thing, remember, isn't going to happen yet for quite a while. Okay? All right? But what desolations, the works, what he does at his second coming, how he establishes a, a farming society, agrarian, I believe it's called. Okay? He's going to do amazing things. Okay? He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. And let's leave it on this note. See, because Christians are like, oh, are we in the last? We're in the last days. Yes, we are. Okay? Yes, we are. Blah. Give me a break. But. Some of these people will get like, oh, what the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the man of sin is going to come up, or oh, Gog and Magog, the trumpets have we, no, 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 no. It's horrible. It's terrible what's going on in Israel. The people are dying, yes. It's going to happen. Pray for Jerusalem. Pray for these people. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And during the kingdom of heaven, if, and you read about this in uh, Amos chapter 9 and Zechariah chapter 14 or 12, you can find that out. Uh, brother, can you help me out with that, where that's located, uh, if I don't, in the description box myself? But um, during the kingdom of heaven, if you don't come up to, like, the Feast of Tabernacles, you ain't going to get rain. Hence, you're going to be starved out. Okay? So, during the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of Christ on earth, even you who want to reject him, you're going to have to go. You don't have to. If you don't, though, you're not going to be fed. Because it's going to be a farming society. A farming, agrarian. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. But, you know, it's going to be no more of this um, uh, carcinogens. No more of this uh, GMO nonsense. Okay? No more of that during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So... Yeah, you can decide not to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles to worship him. You're not going to be fed. You're going to be starved out. Okay? So, be still. Be still. Don't let these things trouble you. Be troubled. Yes, but don't let them be like, oh, 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 oh. We have it here that it's going to happen as it is happening. It shouldn't be a surprise unto you. But see, Christianity and Christians have watered down. There's a famine. People aren't hearing the word of the Lord. Okay? Be still and know that I am God. That's going to be the name of this video. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, the God of Israel, is our refuge. Selah. It is unfortunate. It is horrible. Uh, I've heard uh, some of the numbers of the deaths and whatnot. Um, it's, it's horrible. It's grotesque. It's sad. It's abominable. Lord has set this. 
Everything is going according to his design. You? Pray. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Because you're not going to be able to save yourself. And once we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, get redeemed. And see, y'all don't get this. Saints do. Everything changes. Immediately. Once we get redeemed by grace through faith is no more. Because time of Jacob's trouble, faith and works. Kingdom of heaven, works. Eternity, sin is gone. This dispensation is the mo most unique in all of history. And once this dispensation ends, probably 90% of you who, who are left behind aren't going to make it. And that's maybe being a little bit um, liberal with that number, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But it's not going to be like it is today. And that's why when you got these sleazy believist devils saying it's by grace through faith from beginning to end, that's why you are, that's why I hate. I hate. I wouldn't even use their doctrinal papers to wipe betwixt my buttocks. That's why I hate sleazy believism. That's why I, th I also think that's one of the more dangerous religions out there today. I really do. But be still. If you're not saved, God help you. And you're a religionist, huh? Are you saved? Are you searching the scriptures daily? Huh? Are you examining yourself daily? That's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. And again, you guys coming around wanting me to, to work with me, thank you, but go, go away. I am not interested. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye. Love you, brethren. And apparently, our dear brother Jeff, got to mention this, um... He's, he's having problems with his heart now. So they won't do anything as long as he has the heart issues. Apparently, okay, apparently, the, Je the Jesuit doctors and, you know, the doctors really run that dear poor brother around quite extensively. You'll see this. I actually cried when I read your text, brother. I did. I teared up. Even now, it's like, you know, I don't want any of my brethren to suffer. So, anyway, thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.